Thanks to the supporters of channel member Curtis Rothwell. Well, this is quite a big deal today. We've got the semi-final of the FA Trophy and a potential title decider in the National League North. I feel like I probably owe this club some trophies now, so let's deliver some trophies. Hello and welcome to part 22 of Non-League to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have the FA Trophy semi-final away against Oldham. And then we also have what could end up being a title decider against Telford in the league. Since you were last with me, we have continued to be a very good football team. The only time we've dropped points was in that most recent game against Radcliffe because presumably we were a little bit nervous looking ahead at the Oldham game. Oldham are fourth in the National League, so they are a full division best better than us. But obviously, we're a, we're a full-time professional. They're managed by Sol Campbell. Is that a thing in real life? That can't be a thing in real life, surely. He's been there two years. Mate, is Sol Campbell Oldham manager? I need to keep up to date with what's going on in the world. Um, but we're going to try and knock him out of the FA Trophy anyway. We're the only uh, tier six team left in the competition. So if we make it past Oldham, um, our prize in the final is the two teams that got promoted from our league last year, I think which is interesting to test it because we were almost as good as them last year. This this is potentially winnable, but Oldham are certainly the best team left in it and the one that presumably are going to expect to go on and win the whole thing. And this is the team we're going to throw out there to try and beat them. It's Laidlaw in goal, a back four of Murray, Craig, Ellison and McWilliams, Ewing at the base of the midfield, Trip and Defern up front. And we're playing Farmer out wide because as you can see, he's not really scored since the last episode. Um, and in actual fact, it's been Bradley Ehoyanvian, um, who is scoring for fun at the moment. So he's going to play up front farmer is going to play out wide on the left beckham on the right and we've got the highest paid player in club history louis marsh sat there on the bench ready to come on with agbinone and um, we've certainly got goals in us it's just a question of are we as good as oldham i suspect probably not but you've seen us on cup runs this season. We've beaten teams in, well, beaten a team in League One and pushed Preston all the way, who were also in League One. So I'd like to think a National League team should be a team we're capable of handling. We're already losing. Less than two minutes on the clock and we're already losing. Because quite apart from anything else, I expect with the amount of money that's being invested into this club, the board are not only expecting promotion this year, I have a feeling they'll want me to go straight up again next year and we'll start to pile on some of the pressure. So we need to be good enough to compete with uh, the likes of Oldham within a few months anyway. So what's the harm in getting there early and winning ourselves, an e uh, not an EFL trophy, an FA trophy? This is bigger than the EFL trophy, pr probably, maybe. It's more. I would say it's more prestigious, even though this is for non-league teams. No one cares about the Johnson's paint pizza used car dealership cup and um, it's changed its name again recently and i can't remember what it's called now um the fa trophy much much more much more special unless we lose massively in this match in which case the fa trophy we never cared anyway we were all about getting promoted this season this is just a meaningless distraction i do hope that all the league games of the teams around us are going on while we're playing in this, because I know our next game is midweek. I suspect the rest of the division is playing now. So I'm hoping results go our way and do tee us up for that Telford game being a title decider. It might not be. Um, we might have to do an extra match um, if uh, if it ends up not being a title decider, because obviously we want to see the trophy lift. I think, it's, I think I'm safe to believe that we're getting promoted at this point. We are well clear. But then I also had a little bit of belief that we might, you know, win this. And this doesn't look like it's going to happen. And now Beckham is injured. So Agbenone is going to come on. We're going to let Beckham take one last corner before he goes, why on earth would he take a short one? Is he that injured that he can't do a cross? We've got McWilliams stood there in the middle and he's taking a short corner. I am few That might be the last touch Beckham ever has in a Brackley shirt. That was absolutely hideous. Get him off. Agbenone is on. And, uh, yeah, we do have the option of shuffling that front three around and putting Agbenone on the left where he normally plays. Farmer could go up top and Bradley could go out onto the right-hand side. We might try that in the second half if we're not creating anything with them set up this way. Because at the moment, you could argue we've got two of them playing out of position um, to accommodate the guy who's in the best form currently. 
but we could move him out of position and get the other two back in their actual roles. But that's why you keep the inform guy in his position. It's an 11th goal since arriving on loan for Bradley Ehoyonvien. I really do. I might go, I might have to Google this. He needs to get fit and playing for Posh so that I can hear his voice, hear his name in real life. Then I'd know. <laughs> um, he's only here on loan. I suspect... I suspect after today's episode, I'm never going to need to know again. Right. Murray is going to hit a proper corner. I hope he's aiming at McWilliams. He is aiming at McWilliams at the far post. And there is Ashton McWilliams with goal number 18 for the season. And just before half time, it's Oldham 1, Brackley 2. We've turned the game on its head. And uh, I mean, I predicted he'd get 30 or 40 goals this year. The fact he's only done 18 in the end. I haven't changed any of the instructions or anything. We did have a debate about it like a week ago. Um, I ended up deciding not to change anything and to keep playing him. And it turns out, I mean, it's still obvious. Have they just lost their goalkeeper? Their goalkeeper's gone off injured. 18 goals is still obviously a lot for a right back to be scoring. Um, but I don't think it's so absurd that it ruins the believability of the save, which is what I was worried it would do. I thought if he'd have got near Gabrielle in the network game numbers, then that would be worrying. But I'm not using the tactic from the network game. This is just a normal... Um, I mean, you saw us do a near post corner there. Um, we've got a variety of corners loaded. I think we do a, a near post, far post and a short um, and it's just a case of aiming each of them at the big boy. Um, right, we are going to shuffle things around to get Marsh on. Um, so Agbenone gets to go over onto the left-hand side, and we get 20 minutes of Louis Marsh, who has immediately won us a penalty, and this could be us rubber-stamping a trip to Wembley. Please let this be at Wembley. I know the playoffs last year upset me when they weren't at Wembley. I really would like to go to Wembley. I feel like I've not been anywhere near Wembley for ages. Daffern scores from the spot, a 12th goal of the season for him. And with 20 minutes to go, it is 3-1. And hopefully that's job done. And not only bodes well for this competition, but with the money we've got behind us, bodes incredibly well for next season because Oldham are a team who are pushing for promotion to the League Two. And we're handling them relatively comfortably here a uh, trip to Ewing Ewing plays it forward to Bradley and then Deferne has burst out of midfield he's had another shot this one ends up going just over but we have we have looked very very good since going down really early on we've sorted ourselves out um right we are going to, we've got lots of tired legs on there though um trip is going to come off we'll bring on Knight swap Deferne back into there um, it does mean that our fullbacks are shattered, which is not ideal. We did have Camerson on the bench, but you can only make three substitutions. So that injury to Beckham early on has potentially proven costly if they end up skinning us around the fullbacks. But McWilliams, half decent defending there. Laidlaw comes across and just takes his time of it and then lumps it forward, aiming for Agbenone, doesn't find him, but Ewing, as ever, is there in midfield to win the ball back with an assist from Deferne, and there's the ball over the top, looking for the run of Marsh, but can't find him. Um, 10 minutes to go, still 3-1, obviously Oldham now with a backup goalkeeper in, so fingers crossed, we just get ourselves over the finish line now. Marsh is in, and Marsh has his first goal in a Brackley shirt, and that is... That's rubber stamped now. We're off potentially to Wembley. Huzzah, huzzah, huzzah. And that is an absolute delight. And I mean, Bradley's excellent, isn't he? He's, that aerial presence that he has. I mean, I know we've got a lot of big boys, but big boys are massive difference makers at this level. And he is definitely a difference making big boy. I didn't expect to come and thump Oldham quite as extensively as we've thumped them. But goodness me, I'm I delighted that we have it. It looks like Scunthorpe are the team that we're going to meet in the final, who, of course, we have previous with because they started in the same division that we're in. And Were they with us last year? I think they were in the same promotion race as us last year. So I don't know how they've got on since making it into the National League, but they want to be afraid of us based on what we're doing to Oldham. It looks like Marsh maybe is quite good as well. We've got some good strikers at this football club. I think we probably need to find a way to play more than one of them at the same time because we've got we've got a number of them. It's 5-1 
And this is brilliant. I mean, Agbenone's done really well again there, but it's a lovely finish from Marsh. I know they've got a backup keeper in, so take it with a pinch of salt. But it's 5-1 against a team from the division above. That's the second time this season we've smashed a team that should have beaten us. And there is your confirmation. We are off to Wembley. Beckham is out for a couple of weeks, but that's a little bit more money. And money doesn't matter anymore. We're loaded. Um, but do we? did they play games? It doesn't look like they played games. So I think they're all playing on Monday. And we play on Tuesday because we played today. So I don't know why they didn't play. Oh, because it's Easter. So they played Friday and then Monday. And we've just done that on the Saturday. So what we're looking for on Monday, if South Shields lose to Oxford, then the Telford game could be a title decider for us. Right, South Shields won their match, which is annoying. Um, especially because our running is looking pretty harsh. We've got... A Tuesday, Friday, Monday, and then Saturday for our final four games. Um, so I guess we still do Telford now. And then the next episode can be whatever ends up being the title decider, plus the FA Trophy final. It's all worked out swimmingly. Let's go play Telford. And I mean, if we lose against them, we do still have a problem. Right, not too much rotation for this one, but we are going to have to rotate a lot this week. But we're going as strong as possible for this game. Alpha Ruprecht comes back in on the right-hand side for Beckham, who is injured. Shipley comes in at left-back. Murray has told me that he's going to leave the club. So we're kind of done with Sam Murray. He's finished. And Ollie Ewing dropping down to the bench because he's one yellow card away from a suspension. So Curly can come in and play at the base of the midfield for today ahead of him but we're trying to we're trying to be rotation-y um it's why i'm not rushing agben home back in we play again in two days and then another two days after that so yes we need to win this match but we also need a competitive 11 for each of those next two matches as well because if south shields keep winning we uh we also need to keep winning. That's how it works. There's Farmer, and that's why he's not playing up front currently, because after an incredible season, he has just gone off the boil just a smidgen. And luckily, he has the option to play out wide as well, so we don't have to drop him out of the team entirely. And um, We can bring Bradley in and have him scoring all the goals for now, but Alpha Ruprecht is trying to get something going on that right-hand side. He's delivered it on a sixpence to Bradley, who stuffs it in the back of the net. Less than I think that is the exact timestamp that Oldham scored in the last game, 1 minute 36. Is that exactly the same? That's impressive if it was. We're going to do... And let's. I was going to say we're going to do to Telford what Oldham did to us. That would be a terrible idea. Oldham then went on to concede five goals. Let's not do that at all. I can't believe less than a 1,000 people have turned up for this match, by the way. Um, this would leave us seven points clear with three games to go. It's against the team third in the league. So it's our last like big competitive match of the season. Um, Although there's obviously more important matches where we could actually rubber stamp everything. But why is there less than a thousand people here? They're all saving tickets to go to Wembley, I think. Can that, is that a thing in Football Manager? Are people being budget conscious in a cost of living crisis? Um, Laidlaw lumps it forward. I say lumps it forward, doesn't barely makes it to our centre backs. Never mind lumping it forward. Shipley and Craig and Ellison, between all of them, have managed to get the ball back and we get away with it. But goodness me. Um, right, Ellison, forward to Deveni, and now Bradley coming deep, laying it out to Shipley, and Shipley on the left-hand side. I mean, he's mainly a centre-back, but as you can see, can do left-back things as well, and Alpha Ruprecht can do attacker things. He's scored the header at the far post, still less than 10 minutes in. It's a 13th goal of the season for him. It's a second of the evening for us, and we get, we're going to the National League, boys and girls. We're doing the non-league double. Have I have I ever won the FA Trophy from the National League North before? There's a there's a question for the non-league legend historians because we now have the opportunity to do that, score ourselves a promotion as champions, and win the FA Trophy. And bear in mind the majority of that FA Trophy run, and to be fair, the majority of the work in the league, it all happened before the takeover. Yeah, we're money bags now, but we haven't really spent any of that money yet. We've brought in Louis Marsh and a couple of backup goalkeepers. And we've got some Premier League youngsters coming in in the summer on full-time contracts, as usual. Um, we've we've started to rebuild the uh, the training facilities, the youth facilities. I've got a new contract, but really, the impact of the money isn't being felt yet. This is this this is all my hard work. I'm delivering this as a la this is the last version of old Brackley before we become Wrexham next season, right? 
Bradley is going to take the corner, looking for Shipley at the near post because McWilliams is also being rested today. Camerson coming back in at right back. I've actually promised Camerson more football, so I do need to play him a little bit more often than I do anyway, especially because he's likely to be the one here next year. And McWilliams, unless we get a massive pile of cash as a promotion prize and we can go and spend half a million on him, I don't think McWilliams is going to be back here again next year. I would be tempted to go and spend big on him, though, because, you know, it's 18 goals a season from right back. That's... That's kind of hard to replace. It's a useful thing to have whatever league you're in. Um, I, I wonder how effective he'd be higher up. Obviously, he becomes worse at defending the higher up the pyramid you move, but he's not going to stop being any less six foot five. So I think he'd probably score goals at any level. Maybe we need to turn him into a striker and keep him forever. <laughs> and then it wouldn't then it wouldn't be bad if he scored 30 goals a season. We just wouldn't acknowledge the fact that they were all from corners. Um, oh, that's a frustratingly good finish. Malik Wilkes, what on earth is he doing playing at this level? He's a he's a proper footballer. I mean, I guess maybe he's old now. He should not be playing in the National League North. Goodness me. Well, they got money as well. Are we surrounded by teams with money? Is our is our tycoon going to make no real difference? I also, probably to address some concerns, I think I may have, in my excitement in the last episode, said this became a one-club save now. It is still non-lead to legend. We've given away a penalty here. So it's not, like, absolutely definitely a one-club save. It is still non-lead to legend, in so much as we will make decisions based on what we would do in real life. This is not ideal. But I would add the proviso of that in... I think it's probably going to be a little bit harder for teams to drag me away now. I'm less likely to jump ship for a £300 a week pay rise now when I know there's such potential to stay here and get more money long term, have more success on the pitch long term. So it's not that, oh, for goodness sake, we're bottling this, aren't we? Alpha Ruprecht getting sent off. But if, uh, you know, if a Premier League team or a championship team came in for me now, I'm still going to go. Um, it just, I'm less likely to probably leave for a, another National League team or a, even a League Two team, maybe. We'd probably stick around here for a bit because of the financial situation at the club. But we're not we're not a one-club save. It could turn into one, but it's not a one-club save because it has to be a one-club save. It's just a case of, well, we've still only managed one club so far, and that might be how we end the save, but we're not forcing that. At 2-2 and down to 10 men, we are wobbling, especially because we're playing again so soon. We're going to have tired legs. We've got the distraction of Wembley on the horizon. I'm talking as if uh, we've already won everything and South Shields are a problem behind us. I mean, even Telford. Can Telford still win the league? If they beat us today, I'm not sure that they can. I think they're far enough behind that Telford are out of it. I think it's between us and South Shields. And is that onside? The linesman's got his flag up. Hideous. Hideous. I mean, he was offside miles, miles before he put it into the back of the net. Just blow the whistle, referee. Right, Bradley. Again, he's such a danger. Plays it back to Curly. Curly out to Camerson. We have got McWilliams on the bench, so can bring him on if we need a late corner. Daffern back to Camerson again, and now Deveni over the top for Farmer, who's not scored for ages. Lays it off to Bradley. Probably, I mean, a fully confident Farmer takes that on and scores the goal himself. But he's just... I think it was the moment we signed Marsh. It was a little bit of a hit to him. Potentially because Marsh has come in on one and a half grand a week. Bradley's a full-time professional on loan from a League One club. Farmer's there earning his £300 a week or what he's, whatever he's earning part-time. And maybe justifiably is a little bit miffed about it. But he needs to keep on scoring because the team is progressing around him. If he doesn't continue as one of our better players, he'll very quickly find himself getting the cabbier treatment and just being forgotten about. Um, right, that's a penalty. Curly's been fouled in the penalty area there and fingers crossed we can retake the lead. Who is that taking that? Is it Farmer? It is Farmer for 38 for the season. Oh my word. I mean, I'm talking about him having a lot and having no confidence at the moment. That is balls of steel to do that in these circumstances. <laughs> What a confident boy. Goodness me. 
Um, well, we've re-established our lead in the match. Shipley now on the left, plays it forward to Farmer. I mean, that might be what he needed to now let him push on for 40 for the season because 40 for the season is a lovely little mark that you don't hit in a lot of football manager shaves, or I don't. Um, I don't think throughout the entirety of the Wembley save, I don't think we ever had a 40-goal striker. Um, but Farmer could be that. He just needs two more goals in the next four games. Um, Telford are an annoying little problem that I don't, I'm don't. i not enjoying having to deal with. Remember, we are down to 10 men. Farmer's now shattered and he's taken a knock. So Marsh is going to come on for Farmer. Ewing's going to come on for Defern. Curley can go forward. Deveni can go forward. I'm tempted to bring to bring McWilliams on as well, but I want to leave myself the option to bring on Agbinone. Um, there is still half an hour to go as well. It's a bit early to have used all your subs. But fitness is going to be a real test in these next few matches because we don't have any recovery time between between this and the next match and then between that and the match after. Um, but these... Bradley's offside again. The Lionsman's flag is up again. It was Marsh that time who was offside. I mean, they both are. They're both well off. Do they know the rules? Come on, boys. You've got to be better than that. You're playing for spots for next season. Right, McWilliams needs to come on. We're going to bring him on for Shipley. Camerson can go to left back. McWilliams comes on at right back. That gives us 20 minutes of him forward for corners. See, if we were, if we had 11 men on the pitch, I go I go attacking here because a win's so important. But actually, in the circumstances, with us being down to 10 men, it's a five-point gap with three games to go. A draw is probably okay as long as we then go and win the next one with 11 men on the pitch. Oh, it's tricky. It's all very, very tricky. If Telford score here, we just have to throw the kitchen sink at them. And by the kitchen sink, I mean McWilliams from set pieces. Um, but they're trying to get in behind us here. Deveni doing good, good work winning the ball back. But then it's FM24, so he gives the ball away again immediately. Um, McWilliams then winning the ball back and giving it away immediately. I love it when this happens. And oh my word, Laidlaw, I think, has made the save there which is going to be quite an important one. Of course, having McWilliams on means we now have him to defend corners as well. He is very useful at both ends of the pitch for stuff like this. And, I mean, he didn't get anywhere near that, did he? But we are, we still survive just a little bit longer. Now get it up the other end, get us a corner, stick it on that boy's head. We just need one corner before the end of the match. Give us a corner. Come on, we've done an hour down to 10 men. Let us have a corner. No, not them. Oh, it's a free kick for them. That's probably not as bad as a... Is that bad? Is, that might be worse than a corner. Oh, my word. Laidlaw, it's going to be a corner as well. Just blow the final whistle now, ref. We, we'll take the point. This has, been a, this has been a challenging one. Did you not see what we just did to Oldham? Why are we struggling so much against Telford? I don't understand. Right, 3-3 three, three, in the circumstances. That'll do. And now we go away. We regroup. See... Farmer being out for one to two days. He misses the next match now, as does Alpha Ruprecht. Um, this is why we need a deeper squad to be able to rotate in these kind of situations. So we're playing again. That was Tuesday. We play again on Friday and then again on Monday. So I don't think we can win the league against Chorley. The next episode will be a trophy lifting the National League North and the FA Trophy final against Scunthorpe. Hopefully, double trophy lift. Wouldn't that be lovely? If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.